Hello, my name is Michael Olvera, and my partner is Esmeralda Trevino. Today, I will be presenting to you Coca-Cola. Starting off with some history of Coca-Cola, it was created in Atlanta, Georgia on May 8th, 1886. It was created by a local pharmacist named Dr. John Smith Pemberton. It was originally sold for five cents a bottle. Uh, Pemberton's partner and bookkeeper, Frank M. Robertson, suggested the name Coca-Cola. And I'll tell you why in the next slide. <laughs> Uh, currently, Coca-Cola is available in over 200 countries. A uh, few fun facts of Coca-Cola. Success can be attributed to Asa Griggs Candler, the second owner of Coca-Cola. He bought Coca-Cola for $500 in 1888 and was extremely aggressive with marketing. So Coca-Cola was actually named by two ingredients. And um, Frank M. Robinson actually suggested the name it was the the two name of the two ingredients were the coca plant and the cola nut. So coca plant, cola nut, Coca Cola. And Coca Cola has over four thousand products across five hundred brands, and it would take you over roughly ten years to try every single Coca Cola product. So the purpose and vision of Coca Cola. The purpose is to refresh the world and make a difference. The vision is to craft the brands and choice of drinks that people love to refresh them in body and spirit and done in ways that create more sustainable business and better shared future that makes a difference in people's lives, communities, and our planet. So here you can see a couple of brands and products that Coca-Cola has. Um, and to some of your surprise, Coca-Cola is actually has some stake in the dairy industry. And a couple of products that, that aren't mentioned here are the uh, Coca-Cola coffee and the Coca-Cola energy drink that was released in 2020. So Coca-Cola tried to, a, well, their attempt to enter the energy drink market from their brand, um, it was actually very short-lived due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So they just cut the product immediately because they were kind of utilizing the main products that they would sell. Coca-Cola also owns a large portion of Monster Energy drinks and Full Throttle Energy drinks. So you actually don't see it here, but they do own that as well. So some of the organizational culture uh, for Coca-Cola is they have seven core values, which is leadership, collaboration, integrity, accountability, passion, diversity, and quality. So that's those seven core values. They try to promote it within their employees as much as they can. And it actually correlates to some of the employee benefits you'll see in a couple of slides down. So the organizational structure for Coca-Cola, they operate in over 200 countries except Cuba and North Korea. They have 700,000 employees, including partners. The Coca-Cola Coca -Cola company has seven regional divisions, Eurasia and Africa, Latin America, North America, Europe, and the Pacific division. The Coca-Cola division utilizes a geographic divisional structure and would allow the company the opportunity to accomplish its organizational goal and to maximize profits. So some of the employee benefits are health well-being, financial well-being, and personal well-being. Coca-Cola offers support for the employee's health, including medical, dental, and flexible spending accounts. And they also provide multiple programs to support these uh, the employee's health. Financial well-being, Coca-Cola offers a 401k, life insurance, and financial courses, and advisors. Coca-Cola believes in a balanced lifestyle and promotes it to their employees. They offer paid time off for vacations, holidays, and parental needs. They also offer days off for being an active member of the community, especially volunteer efforts. So the business strategy of Coca-Cola, um, they have five priorities. Um, they optimize a portfolio in strong global and regional 
and scaled local brands. So for instance, they'll um, promote certain products only for that region. They'll have certain flavors like Coca-Cola, Apple, Citra, and Sango. So some of these flavors are only located in Asia, some of them in Europe, and some in Africa. Coca-Cola also is a, has a disciplined innovation framework and increased marketing effectiveness. Coca-Cola stepped up revenue growth management and execution capabilities. Coca-Cola enhanced the cap collaboration system and captured supply chain efficiencies. They also have evolved the organization and invest in new capabilities. For sustainable business, Coca-Cola plans to recover every bottle and can that is sold to recycle and reuse by 2030, which is a very um, aggressive goal. For the water stewardship, Coca-Cola is going above and beyond to improve water security to nature and communities, and especially where it is needed the most. For its products, Coca-Cola tries to ethically and sustainably source all of their ingredients. And for agriculture, it also helps them by offering solutions to human rights, water security, climate resilience, and greenhouse gas emission reduction. For climate solution, Coca-Cola believes they have a responsibility to contribute solutions by reducing their own emissions. They also build a resilience through businesses and communicate to adopt to adopt to climate change. Product and quality safety, quality, food safety and regulatory compliance are cornerstones of Coca-Cola. They also uh, try to do that in every single product they have from the cat, from the teas, waters, the sugar beverages to the milk products. For innovation, they like to use incremental innovation. It is important to adopt, especially since they've been here for over a hundred and about 140 years, close to closing up on 150 years. Coca-Cola likes to develop new products and flavors. Um, for a couple examples, the Coca-Cola Cherry, Vanilla, Zero, and the most recent Coca-Cola Starlight which some have said it tastes like raspberry. And also doing this would uh, have give the business more time and help keep up with the new trends in the market. For the recommendations, creating a division that is promoting health and lifestyle would be amazing for Coca-Cola. For Coca a lot of people are being mindful of what they put in their bodies nowadays. So a health and health and lifestyle division would could capitalize on that. You know, I know they already have the vitamin water, which have certain specific vitamins depending on the flavor, but increasing that would only benefit Coca-Cola. Creating a food division like PepsiCo could also benefit Coca-Cola. Um, much like the benefits of PepsiCo already has with their food division. Um, it would only be beneficial to Coca-Cola to get one because of all the partnerships you already have with the restaurant chains and fast food chains. For instance, one of their largest partners is McDonald's. So Coca-Cola can create a food division and possibly have it distributed to all the McDonald's worldwide. That would just be a massive plus for them. And another recommendation is to not only put more effort in sustainability and recycling packaging, but actually following through. That would just be completely beneficial and just a plus, and it would make them uh, only look better in the eyes of the communities. Thank you for watching the presentation.